We're men. We'll keep you safe. So, one morning we got up in the middle of the night. It was very quiet. I could just hear the critters outside, you know, some coyotes and some crickets. And I quietly got up out of bed and I picked up some food I've been saving for a couple weeks, some bread and some lard and some, some salt pork. And I went out the door, because I could walk and no one could hear me. Went out the door and I went down the road and I met my brothers. And we took off on the railroad. Well, about the second hour, my brother said, ah, Did you hear that, Harry? Did you hear that? They're coming after us, Harry. They're going to, I hear the dogs. The dogs are coming. They're going to get us. They're going to shoot us, Harry. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm afraid. So, <laughs> I said to my brothers, we're going back. We're going back because this is never going to work. So I went back, and I crawled back into bed with my husband, and I pulled the blanket up. He never knew I was gone. And I lay down there, and I talked to God, and I said, next time I'm not taking my brothers, because all they do is whine. So the next week, I got up in the middle of the night, and I got my food, and this time, you know what I did? I took my quilt, because this was the, this was the greatest possession I had. I've spent three years making it. It was the only thing that I had, everything else I'd worked on for my master. So this was mine, and I said, I'm going to just take this with me. So I took off, and I got outside, and I said, God, you show me where the railroad is, because I'm not sure I know. And I thought about this woman, a woman in a faded sunbonnet, who came to my, fa my father and I many times, and she said, aren't you Harriet Tubman? I've heard about you. You have, ma'am? Yes. And this is where I live. You go over the hill, and you go to this, the oak tree, and you go right in the oak tree, and you go down the hill, and you go over it. She went on and on, explicit detail, how to get to her house. Which I thought was kind of crazy. And when I was praying to God that night, I said, I'm going to go to that house. So I went over the hill. It was about seven miles. And I went to the um, oak tree, and I took a right, and I saw up on the hill this house. And it had one candle in the window that was lit. And I thought, if I go to the wrong house, they could kill me. They could take me back to my master. They beat me. They sent me down to the chain gangs down south. So I went to the house, and my heart was pounding. I thought, they're going to hear my heart beating for sure. And I knocked on the door. And she said, who is it? It's Harriet Tubman, ma'am. And she opened the door. You know what she said to me? What took you so long? I've been waiting for you for years. She said, welcome to the Underground Railroad. I said, this is the railroad? This is just a house. I said, this is the railroad. Come on in. And she came on in, and I sat down. She goes, I'm going to make you a breakfast. And she made me bacon, and she made me eggs, and she made me hash browns, and she made me, we had fruit, and we had coffee. I have never eaten that much in my life because I was relieved that I'd found the railroad. And she said, now, Harry, you get into my bed and you have a good sleep because you're going to run 20 miles tonight. <laughs> and I said, 20 miles? She goes, you can do it. I know you can do it. So I crawled into her bed. How many of you sleep in beds at night? You do? Well, I've never slept in a bed my whole life. And she said, crawl into her bed. It had white sheets. And I got in there. It was like sleeping on a cloud. And I got in there and I slept all day. And at 8 o'clock at night, she woke me up and she said, Harriet, wake up. Get up, Harriet. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, here's where you're going to go tonight. You're going to go down to this river and you're going to go along the edge until you meet a man in a boat. It's about 20 miles. You can do it. And she said, Harriet, Good luck, I'll be praying for you every day. <coughs> Most of the people on the railroad were all Christian people. And so I said to her, ma'am, I want to give you my quilt, if you don't mind. Could I give you this? Because this is the price for my freedom. And she said, Harriet, I could never take your quilt. I said, no, ma'am, I made it. It's mine. I made it. Every stitch I made it. And I, they're probably too big, those stitches. But my ma said it was good enough. So I'd like you to have it. 
Well, she took it and she hugged me and she said, Harriet, thank you. Well, I went back three years later and this quilt was still in her bed, if you can believe it. Well, I gotta tell you because there's so much more to tell you about my story. That night, I went down to the river. And you know why we went to the river? Because at the river, the dogs couldn't follow the scent. So maybe you've heard the song, Wade in the, Wade in the Water. That's the story of the railroad. And we would go down there, we would go along the edge. I was, I'm saying we, because the first trip was by myself, just God and me. We were going down by the river, and all of a sudden, I saw in the reeds a man in a boat. It was a white man, and I was afraid, and I said, Hello, sir. He said, are you Harriet Tubman? Yeah. He says, well, get in. So I got in the boat, and he rode me several more miles. He took me to his farmhouse. I slept in the barn that night. He fed me well. The next day, I went to this old couple's house, another white couple. And I went in, and I met him, and I, I'd run about 14 miles that night. I was so tired, bone tired. They put me down. They had me have a good meal, and then I went to sleep. And then I got up that night and they said, Mom, I think it's time to take the vegetables to market. What do you think? <laughs> and, and Pa said, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So Ma and Pa, here's what they did. They went and got this cart. They put me in the middle of the cart. I wasn't very big, about five foot. And they said, scrunch up. So I scrunched up. And around me they put some pumpkins. And then they put some squash, and they put apples, and they put all kinds of vegetables, and then they put an old quilt over the top. So it looked like a pile of vegetables. It didn't look like a slave running for their freedom. And they took that old horse 27 miles. And I was hiding in the middle of the vegetables. 27 miles. It was the best miles I ever rode in the railroad because I didn't have to walk it. Well, many, many more nights came. And I want to show you up here on the map where I would go. I started down here in Maryland, and when I got to Philadelphia, which was several hundred miles, I got into the city, and I looked at my hand, and I said, you know what? This is the best sight I ever saw in my whole life. This is a free hand. And I said to God, you know what? This is as good looking as the gold on the streets of heaven to see this free hand. And I went to a man where they told me to go, and they said, this man's a cobbler, and he'll make you a new pair of shoes. And every slave I took there for the next several years, he would make a new pair of shoes if they were from the railroad. Well, I could tell you stories from now until you had to go home for school about the railroad, but I don't have the time, because your uh, teacher would like to teach you some, something else about math later on today. But let me tell you a few facts. I made 19 trips, 19 trips on the railroad. Of all the 19 trips, you know how many people were caught? Zero. You know how many people I got free on the railroad? 300. And one time, one time I came back to get my husband. I didn't get I never got caught. But my heart was pounding because I didn't know if he was going to be mean to me again. And you know what? You can be beaten, but nothing hurts as much as having your heart hurt. That hurts far more than being beaten. So I went to his house, and I knocked on the door, and he came to the door. I heard noises in there. And I went to the door, and there was a young woman with him. And I said, John Tubman, who's this with you? He said, this is my new wife. He'd gone and married a new wife. He thought he'd never see me again. Well, I immediately prayed to God. God, help me to forgive my husband. So I said, John Tubman, I'll take you and your new wife to freedom. And he laughed at me. And he said, Harriet, I don't ever want to see you again. So I turned around and I was crying. And I said to God, from now on, I'll never be married again, but I'll work to get as many slaves free as I can. And I didn't trust men for quite a while. There's a picture of me, maybe you've seen it, of me with a gun. And I'll tell you what, I carried a gun here in my skirt. <laughs> I didn't use it very much, but one time... Now, please don't think I think men are whiners. 
but sometimes they are. One time there was a man that said to me, Harriet, I haven't eaten in three days. I'd rather be a slave. I'm running. I'm going back, Harriet. I'm going back. I can't take this. I can't take the railroad. <laughs> and so I took that gun out of my skirt and I said, listen, you go back and I got to shoot you. <laughs> because if you tell where the railroad is, all those people are going to be killed or hurt and my people are going to be killed and hurt. So what's it going to be? You know what he decided to do? He ran. He ran. Yeah, he kept going. <laughs> Didn't want me to shoot. I kept it here, and you know, I wore a skirt. This skirt has five yards in it. So what I did was this. I would just take the skirt, and I would just <laughs> stuff it in here, because you ever tried to run in five yards of fabric? It is not pretty. So I would do this until finally one man said, why don't you wear my pants? And I said, that? a good idea. And I hear today, well, here you are. Aren't you a girl? You're wearing pants. It's a good idea, I'm here to tell you. So I started wearing men's clothes, and they thought I was a man because they said, no woman can be that strong. No woman can be that smart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can. So I was the conductor on the railroad, and they called me Moses because I helped the people get free. One time, one time I saw a sign that said $40,000 if you bring Harry Tubman dead or alive. Now, I couldn't read. They wouldn't let slaves read. But I knew my numbers. $40,000. Now, today that would be millions. But they wanted me dead so badly they were going to pay $40,000. Well, I made 19 trips. I worked in the north doing dishes at night to save all the money for the trips I would take. And it got to be time in history when the Civil War came upon us. And I was a spy in the Civil War. And do you know why? Because I knew this area, and pretty soon as time went on, I would go further and further north because it wasn't safe to go to Philadelphia anymore. I had to go up to New York and then up to Canada. I took my parents, who were in their 80s, I took them to their freedom, and I said, how am I going to do this, God? And so I thought, you know what? I've made a lot of friends. I went to one of my friends and said, can I borrow one of your carts and one of your horses? He said, anything for you, Harriet. So I put my parents in the cart and the horses, and I dressed up like an old black lady. And then in the back, I put some chickens, and I fed the chickens pepper. Do you know why? Because the chickens that have eaten pepper squawk! noise so when we're riding on the cart and there's chickens making all these noise they're not going to look at three old black people they're going to look at the chickens so we rode that way mile after mile day after day and I took my parents up to New York State where I bought a house I bought a house from a white man that was a senator and he said to me Harriet Tubman someday you're going to be more famous than I am which I thought was ridiculous because he was a white man but you know who he was? Me either. And the fact that I was, he's <laughs> I was more famous than this white man who was a senator. So in the end, I died at age 83. I died of old age. And the last week of my life, I went and sold vegetables to help the people who were freed slaves eat. I helped uh, President Lincoln in a, as a spy, and when the Emancipation Procl Proclamation was signed to free all the slaves, the slaves that were down here, way down in the south, they wouldn't get on the boats to free the slaves unless they saw me. And if I was on the boat, if Moses was on the boat, Harriet Tubman, then they would get on the boat and take it up north. 